In this video, we're going to talk about the rate law expressions for SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reactions. So let's begin with the SN2 reaction. Here we have 2-bromo butane. And I'm going to react it with, let's say, potassium iodide. But I'm just going to draw the anion. So the iodide ion, it's a very good nucleophile. And what it's going to do, it's going to behave as a nucleophile. It's going to attack the carbon and expel the leaving group. Now, because this is an SN2 reaction, we're going to get inversion of configuration. So the iodide ion is going to be in the back, whereas the bromine atom was in the front. Now, what is the rate law expression for this SN2 reaction? When you hear the word of SN2, think of second order nucleophilic substitution reaction. It's a substitution reaction in the sense that we're substituting bromide with iodide. It's a nucleophilic substitution in the sense that we're substituting bromide with the nucleophile iodide. And it's second order in the sense that the rate depends on the substrate, that is the concentration of the substrate, and the concentration of the nucleophile. If you were to increase the concentration of any one of these things, the rate of the entire reaction will increase. So if you were to double the concentration of the substrate, the rate of this SN2 reaction would double. If you were to double the concentration of the substrate and triple the concentration of the nucleophile, the rate of the entire reaction would increase by a factor of six. So the rate is going to depend on some rate constant K times the concentration of the substrate times the concentration of the nucleophile. So it's a second order reaction overall. One plus one is two. Now let's say if we have a tertiary alkyl halide, tert-butyl chloride, and we're going to react it with iodide. So because we have a tertiary alkyl halide as opposed to a secondary alkyl halide, this is going to favor the SN1 reaction. So in the first step, the leaving group is going to leave, and we're going to get a carbocation. Now this first step, the ionization of this alkyl halide, that is the slow step. It's going to take a while for this step to occur. So the slow step, this step, is the rate determinant step. Then in the second step, iodide is going to attack the carbocation, giving us tert-butyl iodide. The second step is the fast step. The nucleophile, it doesn't react in the slow step, it reacts in the fast step. The rate doesn't depend on the fast step. The rate of the overall reaction depends on the slow step. And because the nucleophile is not in the slow step, it's not going to be in the overall rate equation. So for an SN1 reaction, the rate depends only on the substrate. So when you hear the word 1 in SN1, just remember it depends on one thing, that is the concentration of the substrate. When you see the number 2 in SN2, it depends on two things, the concentration of the substrate and the concentration of the nucleophile. For all of these mechanisms, the rate will depend on the concentration of the substrate. So that's not going to change. Now let's talk about the E1 reaction. Let's use tert butyl bromide. So for the E1 reaction, the first step is ionization. The leaving group is going to leave. We're going to get a carbocation. And then the base is going to react. Now, iodide is not behaving as a nucleophile in the E1 reaction. It's going to behave as a base. And what do bases do? Bases abstract protons. And so we're going to get an alkene. Now, the first step is the slow step, and the base is not part of the slow step. So like the SN1 reaction, the E1 reaction depends on one thing, and that is the concentration 
of the substrate. So notice that both the SN1 and the E1 reaction, they have the same rate law expression. Now what about the E2 reaction? What's the rate law expression for that? Let's use tert, I mean, 2-bromobutane for this example. And we're going to use a strong base. We'll choose hydroxide. If you have a secondary alkyl halide and a strong base, you're going to get an E2 reaction. The base is going to abstract the adjacent proton. The carbon-hydrogen bond is going to break. We're going to use that to form a pi bond, and we're going to kick out the leaving group all in one step. So because all of that occurred in a single step, that is known as a concerted reaction mechanism. And we get an alkene. So that is the E2 reaction. Now there's only one step, and in that one step, both the substrate and the base were involved. So the rate depends on the concentration of both the substrate and the base. It depends on two things. That's why it's called E2 as opposed to E1. So both of these mechanisms are second order reactions. They're bimolecular reactions. So that's basically it for this video. So now you know how to write the rate law expressions for the SN1 reaction, the SN2 reaction, the E1 reaction, and the E2 reaction. By the way, for those of you who want additional practice problems on SN1, SN2, E1, E2 reactions, check out the links in the description section below. I'll be posting a practice test for those of you who are interested. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance.